on Wednesday, February 26, 2020. Along with people around the world, we gathered right here in this sanctuary of the Episcopal Church of Bethesda by the Sea, and we received a smear of a cross shaped ashes on our foreheads, and following that, shared the first of a hesitating practice of the sacrament of communion. Barely two weeks later, COVID lockdown swept across the United States and around the world, making that smear of ashes one of the last liturgical actions many of us experienced person to person, skin to skin, before this long year of social distancing, mask wearing, and worrying over case positivity rates. It's fitting that a reminder of our mortality would be the setup for what has been an unflinching season of reserved and recognized vulnerability to what we cannot see we cannot hear, we cannot trace, and to this very day controls us still. You may wish to have forgotten the words, though 2020 has been our ever-present reminder. And the words are these from Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. For you are from dust, and to dust you shall return. A week ago, I stopped at Einstein's early one morning to get a cup of coffee and a bagel. And the young woman behind the cash register who waited on me, who looked all of about 15 years old, smiled and she said, Sir, after your senior citizen discount, that will be $3.56. Well, I had not asked for a discount. I did not know that my mortality was showing. And yet I regularly get letters from AARP and Social Security Administration, each one reminding me of my age. And I'm sure that while in some cases I do qualify for the senior citizen discount, I'm also sure that I do not yet need AARP. And I'm also sure, though, that life is fragile and mortality is real. I've experienced that in so many ways, especially this past year, and I'll bet you have too. For you see, we've all lived very close to our mortality the past 12 months. And there was before that an earlier reminder three years ago in this very place on the day of Ash Wednesday. It was then Ash Wednesday on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2018. How can we forget? when a gunman opened fire with a semi-automatic weapon at a school not far south from us, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. The Associated Press that afternoon carried a picture of two women with arms around each other, two moms crying and waiting for news about their children. Such pictures of students rushing out, hands in the air, yellow tape making a safe distance, parents and spouses standing behind the tape worried about their children and staff members following tragic school shootings, images that we have seen all too many times. But this AP image, however, was unique. And what caught my attention and the attention of others was that one of the mothers had ashes on her forehead in the shape of a cross. For earlier that day, she had been marked with the sign of mortality and the fragility of life. My guess is those ashes were placed on her forehead earlier that day 
And at that moment, she never thought that she would be pictured uh, almost as the, pic the poster child of the message of this day. But how many do we know, both individually and collectively? How many do we know in our congregations and in this community who by this COVID virus have been taken from us? By now, we all know someone, or more tragically, personally had witnessed the excruciating pain and the family separation, the struggle, the physical loss, the, the likes of which we have, would never have imagined 13 months ago. Hard lessons learned of that validating witness that Ash Wednesday bears as reminder, not just to some, but to all. Remember that you are from dust, and to dust you shall return. Our earthly origin and our earthly destination. To be honest, I flinch every time I speak those words as I look into the eyes of the individual upon whose head or forehead I'm placing those ashes. And I flinch because of both what they represent and sometimes misrepresent. We live amid the uncertainty of life and the certainty of death. The reminders of mortality and the fragility of life are all around us. They come very close to us when a friend, a spouse, or a loved one dies. They come with an aging body that no longer does what it once so seemingly easily did and no longer looks like it used to look. Cemeteries and columbariums, like the one at the chapel and here at Bethesda, dot the landscape of our churches and our chapel gardens, and they stand as monuments to our mortality. COVID-19 serves as a reminder of life's clinical fragility. Especially when we think that we are strong, it confronts our invincibility and attacks us at our vulnerability and assures us that we are not masters of our fate. Now we can go home as we will this evening on Ash Wednesday and with soap and a cloth wash the ashes off our foreheads. But the fact remains and will that, that life is fragile and that we as humans are mere mortals. That's what the words represent. But here's what the words can misrepresent. Remember, you are from dust, and to dust you shall return. It would be one thing at that point to hear those words and to toss up our hands and surrender to the uncertainty of life, to lay down before the certainty of death and declare that nothing matters. We could become cynical and hapless and hopeless as, as some are and have become. But the message of Ash Wednesday, the true message of Ash Wednesday... While it is certain, on one hand, we will all die. The message is not one of hopelessness, nor is it dire. The message is different. For friends, we are marked with ashes, whether customarily imposed in the shape of a cross on our forehead or on our hand, 
or in some altar traditions now because of the pandemic sprinkled by ashes as a sign of that recognition. But the ashes are not a declaration that life is futile and dire, dire, filled with dread, as if nothing matters, nothing lasting at least. Instead, the ashes proclaim that for as long as life extends breath to us, and with each beat of the heart that is within us, everything matters. Time may be short or lengthy, but nothing within the parameters of our birth and our death is inconsequential. Every word that we speak, every choice that we make, every action that we take matters and carries implications and consequences for bad and for good. Each person, each relationship, all moments matter. There is nothing that does not matter and there are more that matter to God than we tend to give consequence or implication that they do. There are none that matter more than others in God's sight or should be in ours. And with that in mind, Lent becomes our moment of offering, our moment of affirming the value that each life presents to us each moment, fully aware of any moment, any day, under different circumstances and conditions, that all of this, as you and I know life, can change. Remember, you are from dust, and to dust you will return. So what if we were to live these moments of these days of ours during Lent, Treasuring the things that we've neglected, the people that we've forgotten, devalued, set aside. What if we picked up, rather than given up, the disciplines that reflect our better selves these days leading up to Holy Week and to Easter? 2020 has held far too many painful touch points. And of some, dear friends, frankly, we need to acknowledge the pain caused, to confess our complicity, and to commit never to return to these again. So might we break with some of those bad habits that inhabit us, that break us, that decimate, that desecrate us as a holy people. Might this Lenten season and pilgrimage strike a new chord, begin a new trend among us, because we're only responsible for the actions that we take And knowing that our time may be limited. No, our time is limited. Might Lent claim in us what is right, what is good, what is of godly measure. The things that are of ultimate importance, the people, the possessions of infinite value that are worth more than money, prestige, position, and power. In fact, could it be that failing to treasure these things is what underlies and underscores the pain, the brokenness, the dysfunction, the violence that has so occupied our lives, the life of our nation, the life of this world within the past 12 months since we last gathered right here? Could it be that failing to treasure that failing to treasure 
is the sin from which we all need to repent. What if you made this Lenten season a time of retreasuring? Retreasuring people and relationships, retreasuring compassion, retreasuring forgiveness, hope and beauty, retreasuring the love that will never let us go, the love of God. The busyness of life, the distractions, all of our sorrows, all of our losses, all of our pains and wounds, our fears, can make us forget or desensitize us to or neglect what really matters or cause us to put those things that we treasure off to the side. What if our Lenten practice this year was to reclaim and re-treasure that which is of ultimate importance and of infinite value. I don't know what your treasures are. You don't know what mine are. But I know that we all have them. And I all also know this, that our treasures, like our lives, are transient and that they do not exist apart from and in fact come to light in the midst of the uncertainty of life and the certainty of death. So dear friends, on this Ash Wednesday, remember, remember, remember that you are from dust and to dust you shall return. And know that this is not dire news, but it's a call to renewal, a call to recalibration, and a reaffirming call to new hope. And so as we are marked today with the ashes of mortality and the fragility of life, may we direct our journey, our pilgrimage during Lent by reclaiming our treasures, reclaiming our moments, reclaiming these days for as long as our life endures. It's appropriate that I close with the poetic and profound words of Robert H. Smith, who wrote this timely poem entitled, The Clock of Life. The clock of life is wound but once, and no man has the power to tell just when the hands will stop at late or early hour. To lose one's wealth is sad indeed, to lose one's health is more, but to lose one's soul is such a loss that no man can restore. The present only is our own. So live, love, toil with a will. Place no faith in tomorrow. For the clock may then be still. Amen.